very, very exciting update on my Waterbox 220 gallon build. As you guys know, I've had a lot of issues with this tank recently, to say the least. Having my Aquascape break into pieces after moving the tank into my new house and going through the whole process of creating a new Aquascape just to have it break again. I mean, it's been, it's been tough, really tough, not even gonna lie. I didn't even want to look at my tank much during this time, which led to the tank being in a bit of a rough state. However, however, things are finally shaping up y'all. And I'm so excited to introduce you to my new coral placement layout and what my future plans are coral wise. If you're new here, hello, hi, howdy. My name is Stephanie and I make silly videos documenting my journey in the reef tank keeping hobby. So if you too are also silly and enjoy the reef tanks, make sure to smash that subscribe right now. So now that my new aquascape is in, my coral layout and my plans for future corals is totally different. And honestly, I quite like it more than the previous setup we had. With my previous aquascape, my little Gawney garden I had was quite small and it wasn't really the best area for them flow wise. Now this time around, I made sure to dedicate this entire area here just for Gawneys. I have several in my collection now and they're growing quite enormous, honestly. So they need, they really need that space. I was a tad worried when placing them actually that they wouldn't have enough space, you know, despite dedicating the whole left section of the left structure to it. But they seem really happy here. So let's just go with it. I also have a, a lot of holy grail torches at this point. They have been growing like crazy, which is awesome because it's my favorite coral in my tank. You know, after deciding on placing the Gawney Garden here on the left side of the left structure, I knew I had to put the torches up in a high place that would balance the movement from the Gawney, you know, so not all that flowy movie type corals are placed together in one area, you know? And plus torches need to sit up high to really get like gray coloration. So the only natural place to pop them was here on top of the right structure up nice and high so they can show that true gold color. I really love the movement they bring to the tank, especially these guys up here on the higher ledge. You know, I didn't place them all together because I'm a bit worried about stinging any future corals that I put around here, but I like the look better because it adds so much movement to the right structure overall. Definitely still my showpiece coral, no doubt. I also have quite a lot of hammer action going on here. It was difficult thinking of where to place these guys in a way that wouldn't just take up my entire aquascape. I mean, especially these gold Rasta hammers. I definitely have a lot of gold Rasta hammers. So it was difficult thinking of where to place these guys in a, w in a way that wouldn't just take up my whole aquascape. So I decided to place here on the left structure, the yellow hammer and the gold Rasta hammer and the green hammer here next to the Gawney area. You know, I really like the color contrast these guys give when placed together. I mean, that's why I really love hammers because they come in so many different colors and then when you place them together, it's just, you know, like it always goes in color like it just looks great so of course i had to do that in my tank i also really love how their placement makes them look like they're just trailing up like onto the aquascape here kind of like that it looks pretty unique if you ask me i also have a few other miscellaneous corals that I kind of added randomly throughout the scapes. Here on the right, Aquascape, I saved this entire little space here for my rainbow chalices that will hopefully grow together in the future because they come from the same mother. They're just kind of broken up. Um, this is a good spot for the chalices because it's, it's shadowed and, you know, they should really like this space, you know, hopefully. And added my dunk in here. Um, next to the chalice section to add some movement to this space. You know, I don't really want too much stillness in this area. And also my pretty pink frog spawn, which is just absolutely loving this spot. I mean, it's, it's really living its best life here, this frog spawn. Also added some digis and anacropora like randomly, totally randomly over here on the higher ledges of, of both of the aquascapes. Once grown out, I think it'll look I think they'll look really nice in the background, especially against the Gawney, you know, the hammers and the torches and stuff, which have a ton of movement. I think it'll be like a, a nice backdrop. You know what I mean? I uh, pop my Bernardopora, Bernardopora, Bernardpora here on uh, this ledge, which 
I don't know. Renard Pore are like kind of tricky because they sting everything. Like they're really pretty, but they sting everything. And they often get confused with Ghanis, which is really bad because if you place a Bernard Pora next to your Ghanis or in your Ghani garden, I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna brutally annihilate them. Um, when I first got this, I didn't even know it was a Bernard Pora. And thankfully, uh, that got pointed out to me before I actually placed this guy. But it's, it's so pretty. Like, it's such a pretty coral to have. So kind of placed it here on this isolated tip of the aquascape. So it can't really mess with anything else, at least not at this point in time. Montes added a lot of red Monty, uh, plating Monty on the back of both of the scapes, which I think makes the tank look really reefy and I <laughs> I I don't know how to explain it but it just makes it look reefy that's what I think in my head when I look at these Montes it sounds silly it is silly but they just it just gives it this depth in this like certain I don't know, I just love red plating Monty for some reason. I mean, I really just love the shapes it produces. I've never actually been able to get that kind of shape out of it in my 40 gallon. It kind of just grew into a thick plate, but, but I'm hoping these guys this time will plate in that nice formation that red plating Monty is known for. And I think it'll look good back here. Give it some more depth, you know, can't have enough depth in this tank. Uh, it looks, it's gonna look good, hopefully. And I'm gonna add some green Monty at a certain point to kind of contrast that as well. Now, moving over to my sand bed corals. I have so much Rasta Hammer. Like I said, I have, I mean, I have so much Rasta Hammer. I didn't have any other option than to place the rest of them on the sand bed just because they're so big. They're like these little, I mean, big, fairly big colonies and it's just like where else am I supposed to put them so I decided to put them in the back behind the left structure on both sides and some on the very right side of the tank and I, I love their location because it makes the tank have more visual depth you know it gives the tank more dimension you know like the corals just go off into the distance type look you know and I really like that and I think it adds again more movement to a tank that I want to keep a lot of SPS and stickies that don't have any movement. So got to get all the movement we can. I cannot emphasize that enough here with my coral plan. Also have um, this little scully meat section right here. Um, they're really bright and obnoxious and beautiful. I really love scullies and meat corals for that reason, but they almost, they're so bright that they really just suck the color and brightness of everything else around them. So hopefully if... <laughs> If I stick them together, maybe it won't. I don't, I don't know, but they're beautiful, but they really make your other corals look kind of ugly. So no hate on my scullies and meat corals, but I, I just place them here. I don't know why. I don't know. And the bubble monster back here. This coral is big and it has these long tentacles that come out at night and just absolutely sting the heck out of anything near it. So placed back here, with the amount of flow coming in this region, it should it should keep it at bay. I mean, hopefully. Also, of course, adds more depth to the tank, which is always a good thing. I'm always gonna say that throughout this video. Depth is good. Try to create depth in your own tanks as much as possible. It really makes a difference. Acans! I have this lovely green Acan rock here, which is actually a green and orange Acan rock, but it lost a lot of its orange for some reason, but I'm hoping it'll grow back eventually. I don't know. I feel like as time goes, it's just, it's just going to lose that. I don't, I don't know. Acans are weird. You know what I mean? Uh, popped it here next to the left structure and it does nicely contrast the movement of that hammer here as well and height of that hammer. Also have these random green mushrooms and recordia that will just not stay in place. It's really bothering me. You know, there's a lot of flow down here in this area. They're just not having it. Not sure what to do about it yet, but hey, they they just stuck here and I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out in the future. And then there's Mega Duncan. Truly, the, I mean, this thing truly is an absolute unit. Uh, not many places you can pop this guy, really. I mean, I I don't, I don't even know. I'm not even going to try guess how many heads are on this thing. If you want to take a guess of how many heads are on this thing, let me know in the comments. Um, it's, it's a beast of a, of a Duncan. This is like long-term growth here. I just acquired this coral recently and, um, I, I, I don't know 
it's size it's like almost the size of my aquascape itself so like i said there's not really my where <laughs> there's not really much places that you can put this guy so i just placed him on the sand back here in the background to add more depth uh i kind of really like it here though not gonna lie i i really think it's it makes the tank come together in a certain way, you know? I have become a bit of a rock flower anemone collector. Uh, not collector, that makes it sound like I really have high-end bougie flower anemones, which I don't. I have some nice ones, but I don't. I'm not, okay, I'm not a collector, but I just have a ton of rock flower anemones now. I'm totally obsessed with these guys, you know, despite my slight, slight hatred for anemones. They always have a mind of their own, you know? You place them here, they decide to move there, they never want to stay in place. Which is why this time around, I'm dedicating a whole rock to them in hopes that our back and forth battle will finally finish and I will be victorious. But of course, in typical anemone fashion, they're still not sitting anywhere where I would like them to. I guess at the end of the day, you can really only force an anemone to do so much, but it's just... It's just so annoying because it always seems like my favorite ones are the ones that you can't see. And the less nicer ones are all big and bold and open. It's like, no, no, can we share an equal amount of, okay, I'm gonna stop right there, but at least they won't move around and potentially hurt any other corals on their little solo rock here. I'm definitely thinking of adding more on here though, because like I said, they don't all open fully. So I need, and I want this rock covered. So hopefully it will look bright and colorful in the future and um, get some more variety, not so much red. And speaking of anemones, I have this awkward rock here on the left side that you're probably asking, you know, questioning why is that there? Well, well, I attempted to house an anemone here. I had this beautiful, long, tentacled, orange and pink anemone. It was beautiful that I planned to place here. It was beautiful. Made this rock for it. It's like a, to be like a trap for its leg. So it's like hollow. It's like a, um, if you think of those like egg holders, that's like the weirdest example. I don't know why I just thought of that, but <laughs> you know, the egg holders, how they cup the egg. I'm essentially cupping, or my idea was to essentially cup the foot of the anemone here. So it's like a, it's shaped like a hole so it can, you know, trap its little leg there so it doesn't move, right? Great, great, sounds great. And it should be great, but I got the flow wrong, y'all. I got the flow wrong. And uh, a, anyway, I was really excited to place it here and watch it blossom, but it didn't like that flow as much as I thought it would. And in the middle of the night, it crawled into the power head. It didn't make it, unfortunately. It was it caught it early enough that it was just sick, you know? And then I kind of like isolated it, but it just didn't get better. And I didn't want to hurt my corals if I were to place it back. But I'm still hurt about it, you know? I'm still dream of placing a big old Nem here in the future, like one of those long tentacle sexy things. You know, I've always, always, always wanted a Colorado sunburst. So maybe this will be a future spot for for one, I don't know. And in terms of future coral additions, y'all already know. Y'all already know I can't wait to add my acros. I want tons of acros. Beautiful, sticky acros on all of these ledges here. All of these ledges will be beautiful, sticky acros. You know, counteract all that movement from all of my LPS. Sticks are really all that's on my mind right now. I'm obsessed, I'm addicted. Not too sure about what other corals I should look at adding. Uh, otherwise, maybe a trachea? I don't know, I, I, I've been burned by trachees in the past but I, I really love them. So it, it would be something I would definitely consider. Oh, and of, of course the Colorado sunburst and enemy. I mean, come on. I don't know, what other corals do you think I should add? What should I add? Where should I add it? Let me know in the comments. I really, really love the way the tank is shaping up. I think it's starting to look pretty sexy, maybe even better than the previous aquascape and coral layout, honestly. I think it holds a ton of potential for the future, especially once some of those sexy SPS are in there, you know? I'm just happy that everything's finally coming together in like the nightmarish stage of my tank just being ugly and me having nothing to report on is finally over. You know, it's about time. It's about time. Seriously.